school biology students, this is Mrs. Clausen, and these are your char characteristics of all living things notes. Now, you would want to write down this title. You might even want to write the date you're doing the notes in your worksheet if we're doing a worksheet, but more often than not, we're going to be taking notes in our spiral that you're eventually going to get. You would want to then title the notes the following way. This T stands for topic. The next number is what theme we're in, and then the subtopic we're in. And this is page one. All right. So when we're doing these notes, you're going to want to listen for things that I say out loud, but also write down things you see on the screen as organized as you can. Underlining things, starring things. And we're going to use this thing called an acronym, which many of you guys probably have heard of. An acronym helps you remember a list of things. And so the characteristics of life are a list. There's eight characteristics. And this term, hog racer, each letter stands for a characteristic of life. All right, let's begin. If for some reason I go too fast, guess what? You should pause, and that way you can catch up. That's the wonder of this being digital. Okay, our first characteristic of life, we would number number one, and then we would maybe put an underline over this since this is kind of a subtitle to make sure it stands out. And we would say maintain homeostasis. Now, homeostasis doesn't seem familiar probably to you. So what's a way that you could really make sure it stands out? You could box it. And if you don't want to box it, maybe you have a highlighter. I would highlight it. This is a brand new word for pretty much everybody. And it's really one that you need to remember and to have stand out in your notes. Let's break down the word. And please, please, please write down both parts. The first half of this word is homeo, meaning same, right? And the second half is stasis, meaning conditions. The full definition of this is maintaining stable conditions internally when their external surroundings change. What does that mean? All right, well, let's kind of back up. We have to remember that this is a term that's a characteristic of life, homeostasis. All living things must do this. Now, the next thing we must remember is that since this is hard, sometimes in our notes, the best thing to do is write examples down. And that way, definitions might make more sense. And here, the examples are going to be really important. So here's two examples that I want you to write down. I know mine are pictures, but you should write them in word form. So let's say the condition that's changing for the organism, let's pick humans as an organism since that's familiar. Let's say the temperature in the room you're in suddenly gets really cold. Do you internally get cold? What would happen if you got freezing cold? you would start to shiver because if you do not shiver, you will get hypothermia and could potentially die. And so shivering is your body's way of quickly reacting to the environment to make sure your internal temperature stays stable. So in this situation, temperature was the condition we're keeping the same. Similarly, if it's a really hot summer's day, you could take off your coat if you were being silly and wearing one. But another thing you could do is your body will likely start sweating on its own. It's not like you were thinking, oh, start sweating now. No, it starts to sweat and that's because just like if you're sick, if you get too high of a temperature in your body, whether it's because of a fever or because of a hot day, that's very dangerous to your body. You're really supposed to be around the temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If for some reason you go too high or too low, either of these directions, your body has a mechanism or a way of maintaining stable conditions and we call that homeostasis so let's check for a moment this is the hardest one i hope you wrote down shivering and sweating to maintain temperature okay even though it's not on the slide the rest of the seven are much easier so let's get going okay so the next one is our body is organized. We have many different parts and all of those parts or structures have specific jobs, which we call a function, okay? These are the harder versions of the word, but if you know them, I would try to use them. So here's an example of a structure. This is a cell. We don't know all the words on this picture, but that's okay. Cells in reality, if it's a multicellular organism like a human, are going to be in large groups, okay? They're gonna group by jobs. 
For instance, the heart has a bunch of cells that look exactly like this that are specific shape that allows the heart to do its job by beating really fast and hard. If the cells weren't the shape and type they were, the heart wouldn't be able to do its function. We're going to talk a lot more about this one later, but I would use the heart as your example to write down underneath this definition. Let's keep going. All living things grow and develop. Even you, you grow, you get larger. You're doing it every day whether or not you want to. But organisms also develop, meaning they mature. So for instance, let's say this is a male baby lion. What's a way it will mature in appearance? It'll get a mane, all right? So the difference between these two is one's just getting bigger and one's changing and getting mature. It's very similar, but not exactly the same. If you like this example, write it down. Just getting bigger versus growing a mane. Okay, the next one is all living things have to be able to reproduce. And we reproduce, and with that process, we're putting our DNA, our genetic material, to our offspring. We're going to learn tons about DNA. Offspring meaning babies. Okay, whether you're an animal or a plant or a bacteria, somehow there's a way that you're giving your DNA to your offspring, and that's called... Next is A for adapt and evolve. Over long periods of time, traits that increase survival in a specific environment are going to become the most common. A really good example is cacti, right? What's something that we know helps cacti survive in the desert? They're able to hold water. They're also able to protect themselves with these spines, okay? Another example would be any organism that's camouflaged. This camouflage helps them survive against predators and the species as a whole will get this trait and there will be very few of that species that isn't camouflaged over time if it's able to help the species survive better. But it takes a long time, and it's specific to where this guy lives. Okay. All living things are made up of C, cells. So we have been talking mostly about humans and plants, but some things only have one cell, and we call them unicellular. Think unicycle, one. Okay, for instance, bacteria are single cell. This is a specific type of bacteria. Other things are multicellular like humans or plants. Your friend, the onion. <laughs> Onions aren't that bad, even if they give you bad breath. But either way, those are cells. Whether they're single-celled, multicellular, plant, animal, bacteria, fungus, all living things are made of cells. If they're not made of cells, not alive. Seven, all living things maintain, obtain and use energy in some way. So this could be through eating, that's how you do it, or by using the sun to make food. You don't do it that way. It would be pretty cool if we could do photosynthesis like a plant, put our arms out, hope the sun's rays gave us some energy, but that's not how it works. Okay, so we do it by eating. Other things can make their own food. Last but not least, living things respond to the environment and they adjust to their surroundings in the short term. This change usually isn't permanent. What's happening in this picture? Ah! Have you ever had someone shine a flashlight accidentally in your eyes? Well, what ends up happening is your pupils dilate. Your body is responding to this environmental stimulus of the light and in the short term responding. It's different than adapt, which is in the long term and rather permanent. This isn't only for animals, it also happens to plants. What's this guy responding to? It's responding to the light and it's growing towards it. Okay, you made it through your characteristics of life and your first set of notes. Wonderful job.